that time of the year again. Wow. What a journey it has been for the planet as a whole since the initial predictions video. And yet here we are. Here we are. Somehow, some way, we have survived at least to this point. The 2020 season is about to kick it into overdrive. Yep. It's time for the Chase Grid predictions. Um, I... Not excited. <laughs> this is probably gonna be terrible. And yes, we're doing Xfinity and Trucks. Even though Xfinity still has four races! Four races left until their chase starts, but it's 12 drivers, so there's no way that it's not these guys. There's two Richmond races, a Darlington and a Bristol, until the Xfinity chase starts. And then trucks, obviously, except this still says 2019 because everything sucks. Okay. The point is, we're going to start with trucks like we always do. Um, I'll just give you my estimation as to who's going to win the trucks chase because, I mean, it's possible Sodder gets a win, but, like, even if he does, like, <laughs> find it very unlikely that he'll do anything in the chase anyway. So I'll just give you my winners for uh, the two races that we haven't done yet in trucks. Darlington, I'm going Greg Biffle. <laughs> I feel like that's a completely grounded possibility even though GMS is kind of in shit aside from Zane Smith for some reason you know Elliot won in the 24 so screw it Biffle can win it's entirely possible oh I see what's going on here there we go there we go there we go and then Richmond, I'm going to go Austin Hill. I don't know what kind of... Uh, I think David Reagan's going to be in that race, but DGR's kind of garbage, so... Doesn't really mean much. I think on a new track, just the sheer force of nature that Austin Hill has been this season is going to propel him to the win at Richmond. Which means that our 10 truck grid for the chase is Todd Gillen, Zane Smith, Brett Moffitt, Matt Crafton, Derek Krause... Grant and Finger, Sheldon Creed, that douchebag, Austin Hill, and Christian Eggis. So yeah, uh, kind of a run-of-the-mill group. The I don't know if the Truck Series has been either c c extremely competitive or not competitive at all. I, I actually can't tell. <laughs> it feels like there are 15 trucks on the track any given week that can win, which is good. The truck series has rebounded significantly ever since uh, the leech rules were put in place. Like, 2013 was really rough. It was not a good year for the truck series. 2013, 14, 15. Oof. Oh, God. The Toyota KBM trucks were just... So good. And I still think that the Rudy Fugel driven team is still the best team on the track maybe you tie him with Austin Hill but the lack of practice has definitely hurt the younger drivers this season and we'll just have to see where everything goes from there as far as the chase is concerned that 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 would play that would, that would lead you to believe that the older experienced drivers are gonna have a bit of an advantage going into this so you think the advantage would be Moffitt, but he has been just garbage all season long because his crew chief is atrocious. So out of this group of drivers, two will be eliminated. After Bristol, Vegas, and Talladega. Who's going to win their way into the next round? It will be Endfinger, Smith, Eckes, and then Creed, Hill, Moffitt, Crafton, and Rhodes will move on. I'm giving Bristol an end finger. He has been low-key really good there. Last year, he finished third? Yeah, third behind 
Chandler, I believe. And that being said, Chandler's name being brought up, he could win any of these races. I think he's in the truck for the rest of the season. I mean, God hope he is, because then, then the truck actually has a chance of winning and getting into victory lane and all that good shit. He did good at Dover. But then, of course, stupid shit had to transpire. Like it always does. But yeah, Chandler has been completely screwed over by a lack of practice this season. Even in the four KVM team, he was by far the best KVM driver last season. And he has had some garbage tracks this year. He had the garbage Kentucky race that lasted barely two stages. He had the garbage Michigan race where he got wrecked by somebody who wrecks everyone that I like. But I'm giving Bristol an end finger because he's been uh, good there lately. Um, he had race winning speed at Rich or Michigan. Um, and all that good stuff. I'm giving Zane Smith Vegas because Vegas is boring. And I'm going to give Christian Eck his Talladega because the plate tracks are apparently where first career wins happen for everyone now. So Eck is going to get him with a push from Corbin Forrester. And then Corbin's going to get a KBM ride next year because of it. See? See how all this works out? Then Creed moves on. I mean, the first round's pretty obvious. I mean, unless Todd Gilliland wins, he's probably not going to move on. And Derek Krauss has just kind of rode his way through the season. It has been not easy for him to get into the chase, and he could easily drop out in favor of someone like Crafton. But I'm going to give the edge to Derek Krauss. He has had a good rookie season, especially considering there's no practice. He has been better than most rookies. Austin Hill moves on because he's got a ton of points. Moffitt moves on because <laughs> I'd be surprised if he doesn't, honestly. Crafton moves on because Chase is garbage. And Shaquille moves on because nothing can be good. Kansas, Texas, Martinsville. Martinsville in the truck series is usually not a good race. It's usually one of the worst races of the season, actually. Which is strange because Martinsville is really good. You know, but that's entirely off the back of like how... You know, if you... If you saw last year's Martinsville uh, fall race, and you saw when Moffat was leading, how he basically just drove it into the corner, got on the brake, and then just flat-footed out of the corner, like they were, these trucks are too easy to drive. There's, they need to like increase the horsepower in these trucks at short tracks, otherwise, because it's just basically last year's cup package at short tracks, which is awful. But as far as Kansas, Texas, Martinsville, what is going to happen? I'm going to give Kansas to Austin Hill. He won Kansas earlier this year. One of them, anyway. I'm going to give Sheldon Creed, Texas. I think... I think Creed's going to get him a legit oval win. Moffitt's going to move on in points because... Uh... Ekis is just not there. The only way that I see Ekis moving on is because because Ekis is just he's had such a such a rough go about it this season. How many second places can one man get? Like honestly, so I'm gonna give the points edge to Moffat, and since you know GMS is overpowered, I'm gonna give Martinsville to Zane Smith. I'm trying to get through this section as quick as possible. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, but um, so between these four, we're gonna go to Phoenix. You'd think the advantage would be to Moffitt, considering he has won at Phoenix. And last year at Phoenix, it was Stuart Friesen. My God, Stuart Friesen. My God, Stuart Friesen. I can't even... I, I can't think straight. Stuart Friesen has had such a bad year. He has been just, just the definition of garbage. You hate to see it. I thought he was going to win four times this year. And I mean, I guess he still has a shot at it. I guess he could still win four races. <laughs> I guess the stars could align, but yeah. Austin Hill, this has been his season. He has finished in like the top ten in all but two races. He has had race winning pace everywhere this season. It is going to be hard to beat him at Phoenix. I don't actually know how he did last year at Phoenix. I want to say he led laps in that. Might have been a top five run. He's definitely going to come in there better equipped. Hattori has a win at Phoenix, so... 
and they have been by far the best team on the track this season besides maybe Christian Eckes. Then there's Sheldon Creed, who has broken out this year. It's good to see. Um, he probably should have around four wins this season, but there's been issues that have been plaguing the two team, and the 23 team for that matter. The only one at GMS who hasn't had weekly issues is, of course, St. Smith, who is insufferable. But between these four, there's really no other way to call it. It's going to be Austin Hill. If he makes it to the Final Four, I mean, Phoenix is going to be interesting. I think whoever you see perform well at Richmond, you're going to see perform really well at Phoenix, too. So Richmond could be a preview of that. But Austin Hill has to be the champion. Like, there's no other way about it. And who knows what that's going to do to the silly season. I don't think there's any landing spot for them besides maybe MBM 61, even though I don't think Austin Hill's driven the 61. Besides Daytona, was it? There might have been one other race, but I do just remember Daytona, the first Daytona for Austin Hill. But yeah. Uh, that's trucks. Moving on to the worst series in NASCAR. Oh, the worst series. And now this is off again. Fantastic. There, now it's not off. Cool. Actually, well, screw it. Four races remain until the chase here. So, for Darlington, I'm going to give it to Briscoe. I think Briscoe's going to win stage one, Allgaier's going to win stage two, and then Briscoe's going to win the race. I really don't see it going to anyone other than Briscoe. Richmond won. I want to give it to Allgaier. But he probably won't win. Richmond two. I'm going to give it to Briscoe. <laughs> Briscoe is just so good this year. It's not even close. And Bristol and Xfinity, where nothing good can ever happen and the worst possible case scenario always plays out. As a result of this, my prediction is that Brandon Jones wins Bristol because everything sucks. Your 2020 Xfinity Chase Grid. Michael Annette is in there. Yay. All guy is in there. Woo, I guess. Harrison Burton's in there. Neat. Tim Sindrick's son is in there. Yippee. Justin Haley coming off a win at Daytona. <laughs> Oh, Justin Haley. Justin Haley has had a strange year, hasn't he? It's very odd because it feels like his car has winning speed at mile and a half tracks, but it's a lot like 2018 in the truck series for Justin Haley. It feels so similar. It feels like the exact same thing is playing out and Justin Haley's probably going to make the final four. I just, I just got a sneaking suspicion. Then you got Brandon Brown. Brandon Brown in the Xfinity Chase. Is there really just no other drivers that can go into the final race of the chase? Yeah, I highly doubt Jeremy Clements is going to make up enough points. I think Clements is good enough to make up those points. Just not in four races. And just not at the tracks that we're going to. So... Vegas, Talladega, and Charlotte. Another Talladega race <laughs> for Xfinity. Four plate races. Oh, my God. Who's going to win them? I give Las Vegas to Michael Lynette because fuck you, this is my video. I'm going to give Ross Chastain Talladega because he's just got to win one of them at some point. He'll just wreck the field and not wreck himself in the process this time. Ross Chastain wins Talladega. And because nothing can be good, guess who's winning the Roval? Oh, it's all it's AJ Allmendinger the second. Moving on via points, this is gonna be an easy first round. You got a lot of obvious exits in this one. So Allgaier moves on, Harrison Bird moves on, Chase Briscoe moves on. Just on sheer playoff points alone, the man could probably sweep every stage and then get screwed out of the win. Then Townless and Justin Haley. So First round, Xfinity's not going to be that interesting besides Talladega. Talladega is going to be the money, money place. I don't know. 
Then you have Kansas, Texas, and Martinsville. Kansas, the garbage track that we should never go to again. Texas, the also garbage track that whoever changed the banking on ruined. And then Martinsville and Xfinity. Martinsville and Xfinity for the first time since, what is it, 2006? I have, when I was making this list, I had no idea who to give Martinsville. None whatsoever. Let's find out who I gave it to. Ta-da! Ross Chastain will advance via points. So will Justin Allgaier. Uh, I gave Kansas to a certain fucking bitch prick. Texas to Cindric because boring. And Chase Briscoe Martinsville because, you know, he's amazing. Chase Briscoe is a sexy beast. And we stand Chase Briscoe in this house. Harrison Burton is going to give everyone a great run for their money, but the problem with Burton is that he has not been very consistent lately. He had a great start to his season, and ever since about race uh, at Pocono about it's been, he has just taken a nosedive in performance, and I really can't even blame that on lack of uh, the practice and qualifying because Harrison picked up the... Uh, the new format pretty quickly early on and he was still knocking off top 10s and he is the true winner of the Kansas race he absolutely decimated Tim Sidrick's son as for Tamalus and Justin Haley I mean that for all we know they could get into it with each other and maybe someone will knock the shit out of Talentless as Harrison Burton failed to do but all of the dumb shit that Talentless has done this season is going to catch up to his Las Vegas bitch ass. And he will not make it out of this third round. Uh, yeah. So at Phoenix, between these four drivers, who has the best shot? Well, Chastain has kind of been garbage this season, so he's pretty much going to be a non-factor, I'm guessing. Uh, Tim Sindrick's son, I think won a stage here at Phoenix last year. I don't know. And Chase Briscoe is just a living, breathing, you know, sex machine. So he's got a ton of speed this season. Anyone could win at Phoenix. And then there's Justin Allgaier. The man who has Phoenix probably as his best track in this series. But we all know that this is 2020 and nothing good is allowed to happen. I'm getting Discord notifications. Neat. Gonna give it to Chase Briscoe. Now, that's a good thing. Chase Briscoe winning the championship this year would be a good thing. I'm definitely not saying it would be a bad thing. But, Jason Burnett will screw over the seven team just like they did in the first Phoenix race this season. Because nothing can be good. It will be Chase Briscoe holding the Xfinity Championship trophy when they leave Phoenix. Only took 20 minutes to get through the, fir the the other two series. Actually, you know what happened is that for the first time in my entire life, I used the notes section in photo in, in a PowerPoint. I have been using Microsoft PowerPoint for about 13 years as one of my primary computer programs in life. And this is the first time that I have ever used a notes section. I'm sorry that I sound like this. I, I really am sorry that I sound like this. I, I just wish, you know, things could be better. The 2020 Cup Series Chase. Yay. Let's go through the drivers. Alex Bowman. Pain. Pain is what I would describe Alex Bowman. He had the best car in the Coke 600 and led 150-something laps. He had a very good card in the second Charlotte race and led a lot of laps in that one too. And he won California in dominating fashion. Why has Alex Bowman been utterly irrelevant ever since? He has done absolutely nothing. His average finish has taken an absolute nosedive. There's nothing there. The 88 team was so strong. So strong after 
California to win the second race in the season just on sheer dominance alone. Bowman, man. I'm so mad, dude. He could have had a ridiculous season this year. But of course he didn't. Speaking of ridiculous season, Denny Hamlin. He has taken the, the true X role ever since Cole Pern left. Cole Pern, I'm sorry. Sorry, Canadians. Danny Hamlin has taken that position on the team. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's working with the same crew chief again. I don't know about... I don't know what Chris Gabehart's deal is. Because it seems like in this modified format, Danny Hamlin has actually excelled. And he's not got the laps led on the year to really justify having six wins. But... You see, the thing about Hamlin that makes him really interesting this year is that he is not being that kind of lay-the-dick-on-him dominant driver. He has been that come-from-behind, you know, bring it on as the weekend goes on, right? And now, the, and now that the weekend has become exactly one event, you know, he's really risen to the occasion which is surprising to me like that's not what I expected to see out of Hamlin in fact I expected him and Bush to be in the complete you know opposite positions but I don't know if winning two Daytona 500s in a row has given him that confidence that he needed but he has been driving the best season of his career like last year was really good for Hamlin but like, this year is better. He enters the chase with six wins. He entered the final four last year with six wins, but he enters the chase itself with six wins. That's big. That is a big thing. Big, big thing. As post Harvick, who I hate with every fiber of my being, along with this guy. Yeah, Harvick has been stupid this year. Insufferably stupid, in fact. I'm drinking orange juice. I mean, it's Sunny D, but it's orange juice regardless. You'd think that this would clear up my sinuses, but no. Yeah, I've hated every minute of this season because of Harvick. Logano's been utterly relevant ever since the pandemic. You'll love to see it. Truex has been garbage this year, except he is running on a streak of what? Seven straight top fives. He just had his worst finish of the season since July. Finishing fourth at Daytona, the horror. Another thing, Hamlin just completely abandoned Truex on the final lap of the Coke 600, 400, for what? Whatever the, whatever the track race. Daytona! If Denny pushed Truex on the final lap and into turn three... It would have been the exact same thing as the Daytona 500. It would have been between him and Truex. And Hamlin probably would have won, but hey. At least it wouldn't have meant that Truex had his worst finish since July 19th. A full calendar month, dude. Then there's Elliot, who <laughs> I can't stand. Half because of his fans, half because it's boring. And the new prodigal son of NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> this year has been pain. But I do think that the funniest thing, Elliot's been involved in a lot of funny things this year. He absolutely threw away Bristol by wrecking himself and Logano with like three to go. That was the funniest thing that I've ever seen him all. I watched that at work and I nearly just collapsed in laughter at work. When that happened. That was so good. I enjoyed every minute of that. But really nothing else this season. William Byron. First career win. On a computer. Is where he started his career. Supposedly. Yeah. He got the win at Daytona. And that's. You know just kind of the thing now. Like I said before. Plate races are reserved for drivers first wins now. Can't really win anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Byron, I still think his ceiling is higher than Elliot, but that might just because I think William Byron is cute, and he can call me whenever. William, I know you're out there. I know you're, Blaney, you're, you're banging Blaney's sister, 
and I am fully aware that I am a significant step down from Lady Sister, but please, I'm available. <laughs> also, William is a good song by Into Another. The Bushes, Kurt Bush, in the one. He has had an interesting season. I think this is... I, it was his best career average finish since winning the championship in 2004. And then even then, I think his, his, his best season was 2015, I want to say. He had like an 11 point something average finish. And it was like 12 before Daytona. And he wrecked at the end, which was stupid. So I think that brought the average finish down. But regardless, it's been an amazingly consistent season out of Kurt Busch. Like, even at Ganassi, which isn't even the best Chevy team. And at a Chevy, which has been kind of garbage this season as a whole, Kurt Busch has been ridiculously consistent. He has gotten top 15s in, I think, 20 out of the 26 races. He has been ridiculously consistent. Which is very helpful in the chase, because chase is garbage. <laughs> And then there's Kyle Busch. Oh, Kyle. What happened? Did you actually sell your soul for 100 Xfinity wins? Seriously, dude. What? What has the season been? And the strange part about it is that it hasn't even been, like, bad luck. A lot of the wrecks this year have been is of his own doing. I mean, did the NASCAR gods curse Kyle Busch after he wrecked Elliott at Darlington? Even though that is one of the best moments of the season so far. If I actually manage to throw together a season awards video, that's probably going to be the winner of the best moment of the year. Uh, that was so good. That was so good. Unironically, the best thing that's happened this year. And then Hamlin won that race, so... Good shit. <laughs> good shit, Kyle. What is happening? Then there's Brad Kozlowski, who... I've been saying it since the start of the season is that he is running the best laps at Penske. Not because of Jeremy Mullins, but in spite of Jeremy Mullins. His, his season started off really bad. They were super slow. But I think that taking away practice and qualifying has actually helped Kozlowski. He is, I don't know if he's just, you know, the natural genius behind the wheel or something because Brad Kozlowski is criminally underrated just like Hamlin was and probably still is despite his back-to-back -back six win seasons Hamlin's still probably criminally underrated but Kozlowski is as well I am surprised by Kozlowski's performance this season honestly I thought they were going to do everything they could to push him out of the two so Tim Sidrick's son could be in it for the next 20 years and do nothing but Keselowski is just that good that they fo that he forced Penske's hand. And I think Keselowski has a couple more wins in him this season even. I don't know where. He could probably get a win at Talladega. He tends to win the Chase Talladega race often. <laughs> so, you know, he could. He could. And then there's Ryan Blaney, dude. He is, oh. Todd Gordon is one of the top five crew chiefs of this generation. Right up there with Cole. Right up there with Rodney Childers. He is actually that good. And I think that practice might be hurting Ryan Blaney. He had an absolutely killer season going. He should have won the first three straight races at the start of the year. And... But his performance has tapered ever since that the practice and qualifying stopped. He has not had that relentless early race speed that he had at Daytona, California, Vegas. But besides that, Blaney's season, yeah, it's taken a downturn significantly. And Tom Gordon is good and all, but I don't think he is... Uh, I don't think he is uh, good in this format. Same for Adam Stevens, you know, on Kyle Busch's team. Like, 
like without the practice and qualifying, without those laps early in the weekend, without that, you know, observing as the racetrack adapts and changes over all the three series on the track during their practice and races, you know. I think that's why guys like Kyle Busch, who run all those races, that's how it helps them out over the course of the weekend. And that's why Bush has been just relentless until this year. Because he runs, you know, 15 extra races over the course of a weekend. So he gets to feel how the track adapts and changes over the course of things with all those different cars. And Blaney hasn't run many Xfinity races ever since making the transition to Penske itself. But, as far as this year is concerned, it's pretty much a throwaway season for a lot of drivers. And it's a shame that Blaney has gotten caught up in that, as I believe he would have had a much better showing. Because just at the start of the season, how things were looking. I know there was an adjustment to the splitter that really hurt the Chevy teams after the second Charlotte race. I don't know if that actually if that if that also affected Penske because they have not been leading a lot of laps ever since then either. You think Hendrick's taken a nosedive? Well, it hasn't been quite a nosedive for Penske, but they have not been you know that same competitive edge that they had before. Besides Keselowski at like New Hampshire, <laughs> but there's a couple of good tracks for Blaney in the chase. Cole Custer, your 2020 Rookie of the Year. You'll love to see it. He's in the chase, and that's about it. <laughs> Eric Almirola. Oh, Eric. What is wrong with you, Eric? All of Stuart Haas made the chase this year, by the way. That is the first time since 2017? I think it was 2017. Had to have been. Anyway, Almirola. He has been utterly irrelevant besides... The one Michigan race, Pocono, a bunch of big tracks. The only way that he's going to do anything this year is if Harvick blows up. Which, you know, we could always hope. You can always hope that that could happen. It might. You never know. Matt De Benedetto. Oh, speaking of Penske falling off of a cliff. Oh, De Benedetto was. He barely made the chase, dude. The man. And I actually have. <laughs> Silver Spoon in blue thinking that he pointed his way into the chase. No, no he did not. He absolutely did not. Kyle Busch is the one who pointed his way into the chase. There we go. We're color coding this shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is just how this works, okay? It's how it's always worked. It's how it's going to continue to work, okay? As far as Benedetto is concerned, like he, his just performance has just not been good. Penske as a whole has fallen off. Wood Brothers especially has fallen off. De Benedetto is not going to be in the 21 next year, and you absolutely hate to see it. But, crazier things have happened. He could do something to the chase. This is his first time in the chase. We'll find out a lot. Silver Spoon. Won at Texas. Somehow. <laughs> because people really stu still do be taking four tires. Because, you know, everyone on Twitter was so mad that Jimmy took two tires and he got the lead out of it. He finished third. If even three more drivers took two tires there, Jimmy would have won that race at Dover. There's no way he wouldn't have. Unless Harvard got an amazing restart, which, you know, very likely. But it's not like that was a bad move. That was totally the move he should have taken there. In fact, his teammates should have taken two tires just to help him out and move up through the field. But no, no one else took two tires, even though that was the correct call to make. So I'm just extremely mad at Twitter because that was the correct decision, and no one understands that because it's what got Austin Dillon to win, and that's the reason why he's in the chase. And actually, you know, Silver Spoon's performance hasn't been that terrible since his win. It's definitely not, you know, the consistency that he needs to get out of the first round. But, you know, crazy things have happened. 
And then there's God, who just needs to leave the 14 so Chase Briscoe can be in the Cup Series. All right? I spent way too much time. Well, actually, that was only like five minutes, but... No, that was more like 15 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah. The first round of the chase is Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol. Who will win their way into the next round? So, Danny Hamlin, Darlington, Richmond, Bristol. Probably his three best tracks you put uh, in his entire career even. Maybe you put Martinsville and Homestead into his top five. Danny Hamlin could very well go into the first round of the chase and win all three races. And I think he's going to do exactly that. So that means that Harvick by playoff points, Logano because nothing can be good, Truex by playoff points, Elliott, whatever. Kurt Busch moves on, Kyle Busch moves on, Kozlowski, Blaney, Almirola, Vance Benedetto, and God. I'm saying, I'm going to say that Benedetto goes on because Bristol is a place that he's really good at, and I think he was also really good at qualifying at Richmond, but that never translated to race speed. So maybe he's still good there. I don't know. And then there's Darlington, which I don't know what's going to happen there. Anything. Any number of things can happen there. But just on Bristol alone, I think Bandana moves on. And then there's God, who this is also some of his best tracks. So I'll say he moves on. Who doesn't move on? Uh, Byron. He has not been a chase-level driver this season. He got the win at Daytona, which, you know, could change everything. That could very well change everything. He could be, a, you know, consistent speed driver, but that didn't really happen for Eric Jones after he won at Daytona, so I'm really not holding my breath on, on Byron. Um, Cole Custer, I mean, the speed has just not been there this season. He's gotten significantly better. <laughs> that is definitely true. He has gotten way better. But it's still not there for him to move on out of round one, especially due to the fact that he doesn't have any playoff points. Silver Spoon, like I said earlier, just doesn't have the uh, race speed. Not the good kind of consistency. He's got that 20th place consistency rather than 10th place consistency. So I don't think Silver Spoon's going to move on. And then Alex Bowman. Oh, Bowman. Why? Why moment? Please. Please get better. So the next three races are Vegas, Talladega, and the Roval. Vegas should be boring. Talladega should be stupid. And the Roval probably will be boring. <laughs> Who's going to win those three races and move on? I give Vegas to Kevin Harvick because nothing can be good this year. I'm going to give Kurt Busch Talladega. Like, it's just been building up. He's been so close in a lot of plate races lately. I think he's going to finally win at Talladega, and he's going to do it this year. And then I'm going to give the role to Elliott because, you know, he's just going to win every road course race until the end of time because Sonoma can't be in the in the Cup Series anymore, meaning that Truex's guaranteed win is gone. So I guess Elliott has to win three races every year. So, there. Uh, Logano moves on because everything sucks. Truex moves on because he's good at Vegas in the Roval. Talladega is a wild card. You know, he could... Finish third or 33rd. You never know. Keselowski is really good at, I think, all of these tracks. He's got a few wins in Vegas. He, I don't know how he's done at the Roval, actually. And he could very well win the Talladega race. It'd probably be between him and Kurt. Ryan Blaney moves on because he'll get stage points. And Hamlin moves on because he has nine godforsaken wins. And he'll be able to point his way through the remainder of the chase. Who does not move on? Um... I'm saying Kyle Busch is knocked out of the round of 12. Kyle Busch could very well still win this championship. I wouldn't even put it past him. But as far as his you know season is concerned, if he still has the same speed that's carried over from you know the 26 races we've completed so far, this is about where his level of performance has been. He's been a 12th in points driver all season long, which I find hilarious. I hope he doesn't win this year. But I almost feel sorry for Kyle Busch fans at this point. You know, just, just it's borderline. I borderline feel sorry. Uh, Eric Almirola drops out. He's been irrelevant this year. Matt Benedetto drops out. He just doesn't have the consistent speed that he needs. And then God drops out because he's garbage. <laughs> Moving on. 
Oh, the final four. How long is this video longer or shorter than the other ones? I don't actually know. The question on everyone's mind is who moves on to the final four out of Kansas, Texas, and Martinsville? Boom, baby. I'm going to give Kansas and Texas to Harvick. Not happy about that, but he just... just I mean... Kansas, you don't know. He had like a fifth place car this earlier this year, but he'll probably win because everything sucks. Texas, he basically owns the track, so he'll win. And then Martinsville, I'm gonna give that to Truex just because you know short tracks. Truex has just been really good at Martinsville lately. He has two straight wins at the track, and I don't see any reason why he couldn't make it three straight. As for the rest of them, Halen's going to move on because points. And Elliot's going to move on because I hate everything. As for who doesn't move on, Kurt Busch, he's really only in the round of eight because of the win. He does not have the speed that he needs to make it to the final four. Good season regardless, though, for Kurt. Um, this bitch could do anything. He could very well win this championship because everything sucks. Kozlowski does not move on. He has not been really good at Martinsville lately. Uh, Texas has been a curse to Kozlowski over his career. Kansas, he could win Kansas, and that wouldn't be a problem. Don't count out Kozlowski at Kansas. But I think, you know, Harvick and Hamlin have just been so relentless this year that it really doesn't make a difference. So Kozlowski's just going to drop off due to points. Same for Ryan Blaney. Once again, doesn't have the race-winning speed as of right now. He's very good at Kansas and Mar and Texas. But Martinsville has been a trouble spot for him. He has had, you know, race-winning speed, like in the first 400 laps at Martinsville several times. But he just falls off. He just can't carry it to the finish. Maybe Todd Gordon will learn how to make a Martinsville race where you can be good at the finish. Maybe that'll happen someday. But that will not be this year. So, here's your final four. It's Harvick, Truex, Hamlin, and Elliott. Who? So, Kevin Harvick going into Phoenix with a shot at the championship. That should be stupidly boring. Yeah. The thing about Harvick is that he may have 15 wins at Phoenix, and that's barely an exaggeration. But, he's not been good there lately. His last win there was in 2018. You know? Ever since the quote-unquote refiguration, where they moved the finish line, I guess that kind of tripped up Harvick. He's like, wait, where's the finish line? I don't know where my marks are. Ah, and he hits the wall. But that doesn't mean much. It's Phoenix. It's Kevin Harvick. He's got, he's probably the championship favorite. Then there's Truex, where Phoenix is his worst track besides the plate tracks. I hate everything. Hamlin, who won this race at Phoenix last year, out of sheer dominance alone, out of sheer two tires alone. The package is different this year. I don't think you can look at last year's Phoenix race and get a good idea of how it's gonna go. I think that would be a foolish move to make. But that being said, I don't remember how Hamlin did at Phoenix this year earlier on. I don't remember that race. It's It feels like a lifetime ago at this point. I've just blocked it out of my memory as a matter of fact. But Hamlin, Phoenix, he's been good there in the past. He has won there in the past. I think he could go into this race if Harvick has issues. He could come out with the lead on a late restart and do what he did last year at this track. I mean, anything's possible. This is a good track for Hamlin. Not his best, but he's got a good shot at it. And then there's Chase Elliott, who's just got the most insufferable fan base, even worse than Dale Jr. fans, even worse than Kyle Busch fans. It has just been not good on Twitter ever since Elliott has made it to the Cup Series. And in general, he has been annoyingly good when he needs to be. 
ever since losing about eight races on clutch moments, he has become an actually clutch driver, which is annoying. Um, he's had race winning speed here in the past. In 2017, he had race winning speed here. And I feel like the 2017 package is very similar to the 2020 short track package. I think there's a very good similar vibe between those two packages. They are very similar. I think the only difference is that like there's less horsepower now I want to say but you know the point is that it's very similar. So Elliot Cavera will go into Phoenix. Especially against this group. Against this group here I think Elliot fares very well. The trouble one is Harvick. You see, Elliot has been good at Phoenix. I remember he won the first stage at Phoenix when I went there in 2018. I do remember that after Harvick blew a tire in the most hilarious of fashions, but didn't actually destroy his car, which was stupid. And I was sad. But, not the point. Elliot's good at Phoenix. He could very well win this. But the thing about Elliot is that, you know, Hendrick has been down on speed ever since the splitter change at the second Charlotte race. So that's his inherent disadvantage going into this. You know, Elliot's been very irrelevant aside from the plate tracks and the road courses. And Phoenix is a flat track where horsepower is important. So that's his inherent disadvantage going into this race. So all of that being said, speaking of all of that being said, has my microphone been on this entire time? No. No, it has not. Even though even though I'm talking and the, and the meter is going in the corner. It's definitely going in the corner. So it's definitely recording some voice of some sort. I don't know from where. But hopefully, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's been recording my voice this entire time. If it hasn't been, I'm actually going to scream and probably not make this video. The point is, out of this group, Who's going to win the championship? 2020 has been stupid. It has been a dumb year from start to finish. Nothing good has happened. Everything has sucked. And sheer stupidity has ruled the day. Which is why I believe the 2020 champion is Chase Elliott. You know, I'm not saying that lightly. I think this is the year. If he makes the Final Four, I think he's going to win. But he just has to get there first. Kansas, Texas, it's going to be tough for Hendrick Cars. He'll maybe have a top 10 run, but he's got to do good at Martinsville. If he finishes second or third there, he could point his way in. But it's going to be tough. He's got... He's coming into this championship season, I think, fourth in Chase points. But I think Chase is finally going to win the chase. Because 2020 is stupid. And I think this is the stupidest way the season could end, realistically. So there you have it, maybe, hopefully, if the microphone recorded. God, I hope the microphone recorded. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. This has been Coco's Games with 2020 Chase Grid Predictions video. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you whenever I make the next. And we'll see you over the course of the chase. Even though I'd much rather die than watch NASCAR. You know. You know how it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye!